In a quiet corner of Magnolia Cemetery, eight men are buried. One of them is Horace Hunley, the man who gave his name, his energy, his enthusiasm, and finally his life to an extraordinary machine. All eight men drowned in a training accident in the submarine H.L. Hunley. This is the Hunley today, a priceless relic of the Civil War, but also a war grave. On February 17, 1864, four months after the training accident, a new crew took the Hunley to sea and carried out history's first successful submarine attack. They never returned. Charleston was the Confederacy's only East Coast port, yet it was being strangled by the Union's much more powerful Navy. When the Hunley sank the USS Housatonic, Charleston itself was coming under increasing pressure. In the summer of 1863, Union forces had taken Morris Island and set up batteries which threatened the entire harbor in the city. An enormous gun, the Swamp Angel, lobbed 200-pound shells into the streets. Fort Sumter came under heavy bombardment from the new Union positions, which were only about a mile away. The siege of Charleston was gathering force. Several nights a week, the Hunley, stationed on Sullivan's Island, put to sea in an attempt to reach the blockading ships. It was dangerous work. Thirteen men had already died in her during training. And it was tough work. Her propeller was hand-cranked, so getting a few miles offshore took hours of exhausting labor. On the night of February 17, 1864, four miles off Sullivan's Island, the Union sloop of war, Housatonic, came into view. But then the Housatonic saw the Hunley. General Beauregard, who was in charge of the defense of Charleston, had said several times after the, the first two crews had perished that the, the Hunley is more dangerous to its crew than it is to the enemy. So he basically ordered the Hunley to attack on the surface. Although she was capable of submerging completely, the Hunley attacked semi-submerged. For a vital few seconds, the lookout on the Housatonic was not quite sure what he'd seen. By the time he realized it was something that was a threat to the Housatonic, he sounded general quarters, but the Hunley was too close. So they couldn't lower their cannons low enough to get an angle so people came on deck and started firing upon the, the Hunley with small arms fire and, and rifles. The Hunley jammed its torpedo with a harpoon tip into the Housatonic's wooden hull. The men backed away, then pulled a rope attached to a trigger on the torpedo. The Housatonic sank within three minutes but with surprisingly few casualties. Five men were killed, with the rest of the crew picked up by other blockade ships. But what about the Hunley? The system was that the Hunley would signal success by flashing a blue lantern. And two different people saw the lantern. One of them was a sentry on Sullivan's Island that lit a campfire to guide the Hunley to come back. But she didn't come back. She was lost. She stayed lost until a team led by the author and shipwreck hunter Clive Cussler found the sub in 1995 after 14 years of searching. It took five years to complete the plans and raise the money to recover the Hunley. The big concern was that the hull would break up while being lifted. Working in near-zero visibility, divers placed a line of slings along the entire length padded with plastic foam. The slings were attached to a massive steel frame placed over the sub. The whole assembly would then be raised in one piece.
everything went without a hitch. Today, the Hunley lies suspended in the same slings inside a huge tank on the dock at the Charleston Navy Yard. The hull was based on a steam boiler, but much modified. Everything was streamlined. Rivets were finished flush, and tapered sections were added fore and aft. Buoyancy was regulated with two ballast tanks with hand pumps to alter water levels. Dive planes controlled by the captain adjusted the sub's dive angle. There was a heavy ballast keel which could be dropped from inside in an emergency, although no crew ever managed to do that. And there were two snorkel tubes with leather bellows to bring in fresh air while submerged. A 20-foot spar carried the torpedo, 135 pounds of black powder with a rope trigger leading back to the sub. The spar was still attached when the sub was found, then removed before the recovery operation. Very good. Okay, close the door. It's believed that the crew were all Confederate soldiers. Here's one man's pipe. Did they smoke down there? A lead pencil. A thimble. Soldiers did their own sewing. Many different kinds of buttons, including one from a uniform of the Union Navy, where one crewman must have served before the war. Here's a Union soldier's ID tag, probably a battlefield trophy, a matchstick, and the candle it was used to light, perhaps just for a moment to read the compass 